Hi everybody and welcome back to my studio. Um, a few of you, actually quite a lot of you, watched my video of how I made a painting in the last week and it was called Passion One. And if you watched my video, you will see I really struggled with that painting and yet it came out to be very beautiful and worth the struggle. And I had a lot of comments and I really did appreciate them because it was, it started well, it became a little bit of an ugly duckling and then it actually ended up a swan. So it worked out really well and I really enjoyed working with that palette of colours. So I felt like I should attempt a larger painting using the same palette of colours. And this painting is on a 18 by 24 inch artist wooden panel. And this video, this painting is going to, I suspect I'm going to have to upload it to YouTube in two parts. So stay tuned and if the um, painting ends with me telling you you need to go on to another part um, that's because YouTube it was difficult to get such a large file uploaded but that being said so I've primed my panel with some uh, brown light brown spray paint just a generic spray paint that I bought from the store um, just to kind of I always do a primer and a color very close to the palette that I'm going to be using. So what I decided after the fun that the last painting gave me is I would attempt um, to, to do a different technique this time and I'm going to attempt a dirty pour uh, using the same palette of colours. Now for those of you that are watching this video and you're wondering, what does it mean to say the dirty pour technique? What that means is uh, I'm going to be taking the palette of my colors and I will be layering them into that plastic cup. So, and then I will turn that plastic cup over onto my canvas and for a few minutes allow the the different products within the resin to interchange, move around. Um, and then I'm going to lift the cup and then I'm going to tilt the canvas and see what kind of effects I receive from this palette. Um, I am going to be using tonight, the colors are going to be listed in my description of this video. And I've had a lot of questions of what colors am I using? And, um, but I will try and kind of walk you through those colors. So the first product that I'm using is Mayron Gold Body Powder. It's a body paint essentially, in metallic gold. And that's been mixed in resin. I've come behind and my second layer is a tattoo ink and it is by Mums Millennium and that is Doo Doo Brown. They have some really funky uh, names for their colors. And then I came behind that with a diamond uh, pigment, black diamond pigment, and that color was medieval copper. And now I'm coming behind that with Mum's Millennium Tattoo Ink and uh, that colour was suede and that's kind of a mid-brown. Now this is my favourite colour in the palette and it seems to be everybody's favourite colour. This is a golden fluid acrylic and it's a mixture of two colours. One is 75% of the mix and one is 25% of the mix. The 75% paint component is transparent red iron oxide 
and the 25% is quinacridone nickel azo gold. Both of those are golden fluid acrylics. And as I said, the description will be in my uh, description of this video on YouTube. And I've also put the Amazon links so that you can go in very easily and identify these products. And I just put a little bit of Mayron again. And if any of you watched my uh, previous video, Passion One, you will know I battled with Mayron. Um, it actually gave some beautiful effects, but I'm still, I'm still trying to figure out the product. I'm trying to understand how it works best and yields the kind of effects that I'm looking for. But also, I feel almost like I'm trying to tame the product, um, if you will, because it's very dominant. And the reason why it's dominant, and I've done a couple of test pieces since I poured Passion One, the painting. The reason why I believe it's very dominant is because it's very light in its weight. So when it's suspended in resin, it sits on the top. It never go. It don't matter how much you mix it. It the majority of it wants to be close to the surface, and that created some interesting effects. But it created some issues for me, and just this video you're going to see it created another bunch of issues for me, and uh, to the point of this painting is actually going to be done. Um, essentially in three layers so that's why the video may need to be split into two because it uh, I almost lost sleep over this piece in between the layers trying to figure out what am I going to do different so I'm just spraying in a little bit of 91% alcohol I sprayed that after I'd put the Mayron in there because 91% alcohol does disperse paint it kind of breaks it down a little bit. So I'm continuing to layer. And the products are uh, Black Diamond Pigment, Medieval Copper, Black Diamond Pigment, Diamond Hazelnut, Mayron, Metallic Gold, the two golden fluid acrylics, Transparent Red Iron Oxide and Quinacridone, Nickel Azo Gold, two Mum's Millennium Tattoo Inks, Suede is the Mid Brown, and Doodoo Brown, funny name, is the Deep Dark Brown. And I just continue the layer. It was interesting because when I got this cup full, I looked at it and then realized how am I going to turn that over without ending up wearing the resin? And uh, it's a 16 fluid ounce cup. So it's not a small cup. So I was kind of trying to figure it out. So I came up with this. I'll do what, you know, I've seen people do this on YouTube. They pick up their panel or their canvas. They apply the cup to the canvas and then they do a quick flip round and everything looks great. I aborted that. I decided that would just not work. So then I started thinking, maybe I can just flip it. You know, I can be super quick. But the more I looked at the volume of resin, the more I decided I didn't want to be wearing Mayron gold metallic in resin for a few days. Um, would it look like a character out of a Bond movie such as Goldfinger? Um, but so right now I'm trying to be ingenious and... Uh, how am I going to flip over this cup onto my canvas without emptying the contents? Well, here we are, cling film. I decided this might work, so I essentially sealed. Look at that. If I could capture that on, on canvas, I'd be really, really pleased. But So I covered it over with cling film, created um, somewhat of a seal, and I flipped it over. Perfect. And uh, this is quite ingenious. I'm sure I'm not the first to uh, do this technique. And uh, so I laid out the cling film. I kept the cup pretty close to the board. 
and as I teased it off the cling film I kind of lightly tugged on the cling film and uh, I worked it free and uh, as you can see you're going to see I did a pretty good job I was actually quite pleased I didn't seem to lose very much at all and uh, the cup stayed with a pretty much sealed to the wood panel look at that I mean seriously that worked beautifully so I've got my dirty pour um, and it's sitting on my wood panel and uh, I always fear and as you see during this video I shouldn't have feared this at all because I always fear that I'm not going to have enough and it's going to end up not coating the sides. So I did my normal um, way I paint. I don't typically do dirty pores, to be honest. Um, so I, I wouldn't profess to be an expert at them. Um, but I, I'm doing what I normally do, and that is I'm starting to build some of the palette of colours and some layering around the panel and that's my typical uh, way of painting that uh, that copper that you've just seen me put down is the black diamond medieval copper pigment powder and black diamond pigments I have probably about eight maybe ten uh, colors and uh, they're essentially mica powder, that's what they are, like uh, Perlex. But I have to say, I'm very pleased with um, those products. And I've used a lot of Perlex and I would, I personally, and I'm not affiliated with the Black Diamond or anything, I actually believe I prefer those that particular product over Perlex. Not that Perlex isn't great, because it certainly is, and it, it has a phenomenal range of colours. So um, I'm carrying on around my canvas, and that's the Tattoo Ink in the Suede. And uh, there's also the Tattoo Ink, the deep brown, the dark brown. Towards the front is the other Tattoo Ink, which is Mum's Millennium. Also, that is the brand, um, and that's in uh, Doo Doo Brown. And what I'm doing now is I'm just tapping away and kind of um, sliding my hand over because I'm just making sure that I have good coverage all the way around that cup. And uh, I don't want to give away the finale, but I probably didn't need to do this step um, when I... I I guess I underestimated the volume that I had in that cup. And I'm just smearing around. And as I said, this, uh, this was the first layer. I've seen uh, resin artists use uh, various brushes, um, those spongy artist uh, brushes and what have you. Um, I do a lot of my um, combining on the, on the uh, wooden panel by hand. I, uh, most of the time I, I believe I get a better result, but uh, everybody has a different technique. And if you look at my glove there, you'll see that I have I actually have three different gloves on um, because I always anticipate that I'm going to need to make a change. So it's uh, that's what I'm doing there. That's why I wear more than one glove. So I'm just creating a lot of coverage. Incidentally, look at beautiful colors and and the. Uh, medieval copper to black diamond pigment is really popping. I'm not putting too down too much of the golden 
transparent iron oxide with the quinacridone nickel azo gold because I definitely want to bring that one to the surface and have a have a good um, a defined part of the painting with that color so I'm kind of holding back on that one to see what I need once I lift that cup. And when I lift that cup, I was surprised. So um, stay tuned for my struggles as they continue. And I'm just continuing on and I'm building color on my panel. And I don't like to waste any resin. So once I get to the point where I, the cup is pretty empty, I. Uh, always turn it over on my canvas and allow it to sit and any residue to come out. And the resin that I'm using in this piece is Evirotex. There's a lot of great resins on the market. And I change. I, I go through, you know, uh, I'm looking for cost effective, but uh, so that drives my choice of resin to a degree. Obviously, I want quality. Um, so I do kind of interchange my resin brands. Now, this resin has been mixed and then it's been mixed with the solid, which is your paint your mica powder, um, your tattoo ink, or your May Wrong Gold um, body paint powder. And, uh, but it hasn't been heated at all. And I, I always, I don't hold back from heating the resin, but I'm very conscious that once you heat resin, you are accelerating the first phase of curing. Um, it will move towards being a very um, fluid liquidity, which is what you need to move your resin around. But at the same time, you, um, you've accelerated and it's going to start moving towards a gel consistency. And once you get to a gel consistency, you're very limited in what you can do. So I've I've got all my products on, I'm not wasting any, I'm allowing the residue of what was in them to uh, drip onto the canvas. I'm doing all this work around the sides and when you see me lift that cup you'll realise I probably didn't need to because of the sheer volume that's in that cup. And a lot of you have been sharing your comments with me um, via YouTube and Facebook. And uh, I really appreciate that um, because it kind of show, gives me an indication of what you enjoy. And, uh, and it kind of enables me to take on board some of your great comments and your feedback in how I present my videos in the future. And before I lift that cup, if any of you are interested, and I'm probably going to put this into the, um, the description of my comments, but I have a Facebook page called Resin and Mixed Media Art with Tina Kamala. And I have about 3,000 uh, members. And uh, please, please be sure to check that out. We have a, quite an interesting community of artists. We have some beginners, which are always welcome, intermediate, and we have some uh, artists that are being commissioned and um, really have made a living at doing uh, mixed media art. So please um, check that out. Okay, I'm going to lift the cup.
Okay. So it's interesting when I lift this cup. So it's pretty, it's interesting, but that Mayron gold body paint is dispersed and is sitting throughout the top surface of the dirty pore. So I'm gonna to have to tilt it. But before I tilt it, I see that interesting shape there. And I decided to reintroduce some of the um, golden fluid acrylic in the transparent red iron oxide with the quinacridone nickel azo gold. Because before I tilt it, I wanna make sure I do have some of the red um, at the surface. And I just sprayed a little bit of 91% alcohol. And the reason why I spray, uh, sprayed that is because I'm trying to just disperse out that Mayron gold powder again. Just like I did in my previous video. So I'm heating it. And the reason why I'm heating it is because there's quite a lot of volume of resin there. And although it's a liquid, um, I want it to move around very freely. So the viscosity needs to be thinner and um, and the it needs to be more of a fluid liquid. So I heated it and that will uh, thin the viscosity of the resin and make it very easy to move it around. I'm nervous to tilt at this point, but I'm excited as well because I got some interesting effects from Passion One when I did that painting, when I tilted it. But I'm very concerned that the Mayron Gold is literally took over throughout the main surface um, of this resin. So I'm starting to tilt, and I'm sorry, I apologise guys, it's very difficult to tilt and give you um, a view of every component of the tilt. I'm sort of considering investing in a better camera. I'm using my iPhone, and uh, it's actually producing really great videos, but um, I think that at some point I'm probably going to have to invest in a camera that gives just a better um format i guess uh, a bit a better view but as you can see i'm tilting away now here's the tilt so it's very pretty you can't see this too well but it's very shimmery and it has a lot of subtle texture so i like that the problem is it's almost like a base layer because, and it's, it is largely, unfortunately, that Mayron gold, which I actually like, but because it's so light, again, and I don't believe I put in too much of it, again, I'm battling. It is all over. So what I'm doing right now is I'm going around the sides and I'm making sure the sides have got a coat in it. And the reason why I'm doing that right now is because it gives me the opportunity to look at the piece a little bit. And uh, so I'm just kind of coating the sides and looking at the piece. Now, you see that red line that's running um, across the piece and then it's again, you see the red line towards the top. So I'm, I was looking at that red line and, and I kind of like it. The problem is it's not enough in its own right. But I like the kind of way it cuts through the resin piece. So um, again, that golden transparent red iron oxide is winning the day really. It's um, it's just such a beautiful color. So I decided that I would follow 
actually I'm just making sure I've got out everything in my cup, I decided I would take that line and I would follow it and um, start creating some lines through the piece using the various colors in the palette. And I'm tilting my canvas, uh, my cup right now, trying to get the last of it out. It's probably not worth it for the amount I'm gonna get, but uh, I'm in the habit of not wasting any. So I'm just gonna roll that through the piece and follow the line of that red. And if you look in the, um, you have to use your imagination here, but if this was a clock face and you looked at six o'clock, can you see there's a lot of texture there? So what's coming through is the black diamond pigment in the diamond hazelnut is kind of coming through the mayron gold there. The problem is it isn't doing it enough. Um, most of the colors are, the mayron gold is just dominant because it's naturally sitting on the top. So following that red line, I'm coming behind and doing kind of a sister line to it, because I like that look. I, kind of interesting that that kind of line that's running through. So I decided to run with it a little bit. The dirty pour wasn't a waste because it has created so much texture and you can't see it so much in this video, but the photographs I'm going to post to Facebook and I'm also on Instagram, you, you see it is really very shimmery. So it's actually very, very pretty. It's just too uniform. That, that brown that I just put through there is the Mum's Millennium uh, Tattoo Ink in the Doo Doo Brown. And I did mention this in my previous video, but for those that haven't seen it, Tattoo Ink has a very dense pigment of color. Now, there, I have purchased other brands of Tattoo Ink and they've not been as good as Mum's Millennium. Mum's Millennium appears to be um, a trusted brand of tattoo artists themselves. And what I found is it actually creates some really beautiful colors when it's in resin. And it's a good time to also um, go over how you mix products into resin. So. Resin is the, uh, is the base, essentially, clear resin. And then you're going to mix the solute, which is the product, into the resin. Uh, be it ink, paint, mica powder, spray paint, they're all compatible with clear resin. You'll be surprised how little you need to yield a, a good colour in the resin. Because of its reflective qualities, I, I believe. But essentially, if you look at clear resin and you're going to add a product to the resin, whatever the volume is, the resin has to remain at 90% or greater of your volume. So you can't take, for instance, um, you can't do half paint, half resin. It would never cure. Uh, if you go above 10% in your additive to the resin, so 90% resin, 10% product, you're fine. But if you start going up on the additive, 
um, you may find that the resin will become very gel-like and it may not cure. So when you mix your product into resin, just be sure that you've got at least 90% of the volume is clear resin. But you're probably going to find if you use golden fluid acrylics, for instance, it ends up being about 96% clear resin because the um, golden fluid acrylics are so high pigment professional acrylic paints that you need very little to actually yield your color. Now, what I'm doing here with a popsicle stick is, um, and I love layering with popsicle sticks. Um, you know, everybody has a technique and I just love the way I can kind of guide it through the piece. So I'm continuing to use that shape and I'm applying layers throughout the piece. So I'm starting, I'm kind of starting to um, gain some composition here because I'm starting to create a design. I've created a feature for the eye to follow, which is the lines kind of cascading through the piece. And that uh, transparent red iron oxide by Golden mixed with a little bit of quinacridone Nickel Ezo Gold is uh, coming through, and that's the red you can see. It has a very translucent uh, red. Very, very beautiful, very beautiful colour indeed. And while I'm putting these lines through, I'm sort of thinking about um, my design all the time. But what I wasn't anticipating with the dirty pour is to literally lose all my colours under that Mayron gold. You know, it's amazing if you could lift off that Mayron gold that's throughout the piece. There's deep brown, copper, there's the red oxide. They're all sitting underneath that mayron. And I don't believe they're gonna come up to the surface. Just because the mayron, it's not a bad feature of it. The mayron will, seems to always sit on the surface. So I'm just reintroducing my colors. Now that, that I'm putting on right now, is the Mayron gold, metallic gold in resin. It is beautiful. It's just very dominant. I need to find a way to um, almost kind of make, tame it almost on my piece. I'm trying to fight for the words here. I'm, um, it's just a runaway kind of uh, product. I just keep winding around through the piece. And see, that's a popsicle stick. How great is that? Painting with a popsicle stick.
and you know over time if you try it you can be very uh, precise in the way you uh, apply those layers so I'm just adding a little bit of gold there um, And I'll disperse it out in a moment with my uh, blowtorch. I will be using my hot heat gun because I'm not going to disperse it. Um, the heat gun, so the blowtorch heats the resin, makes it very uh, fluid. Um, that in itself moves the layers of the products. But the heat gun diffuses them out. So um, I wouldn't use a heat gun on those, those lines because I would lose my lines. I would use it if I wanted to soften them. And again, I'm kind of just doing the sides. I often find myself applying some of the resin to the sides because it gives me a chance to kind of look at the piece. So this is the first layer and uh, it's not going to be the only layer because when I put it under cover and came back and looked at it a few times and I decided it. there were certain components that I really liked about it. I enjoy the lines that are cascading through. I enjoy the red um, coming back and having that more on the surface. It just never had enough. For me, it didn't have enough for the eye to, to look at. So I'm, I'm torching now um, for any air bubbles and uh, it just gives that beautiful mirror finish. But while I'm torching, um, the resin is getting close to being, starting to cure, so I'm running out of time. There's no doubt that this palette yields beautiful colors. But the Mayrom, it is a beautiful color, but I don't know it lends itself well to a dirty pour because it dispersed out. It's just so much. It's, it's such a, it's only because it comes to the surface, otherwise it wouldn't be dominant. It's just naturally wants to sit on the surface. And I got my heat gun here and I'm just applying it to a couple of places where I want to soften the lines. Um, I have quite a bold piece of gold there and uh, I just felt that it was too, um, overstated. So I'm just softening some of the lines with the heat gun. But I'm doing it very lightly because I don't want them to um, dispute, sort of disperse out too much. So this is layer one. Layer two is when it got really interesting. It's very warm. I just put my hand there because I could um, I could feel some warmth coming off the piece, which means that I'm pretty much done with that layer. 
Um, once the resin is very warm, it's now started its curing process. Now I'm looking for air bubbles. Decided to come in with a little bit more. I'm still kind of looking at it and it's just, it's just not what I was expecting. But I love that base color, but it really is a base color. This is not going to be a one layer success story, that's for sure. I'm going to bring you in for some close-ups. Sorry about my lighting. Still trying to figure that out. Still trying to figure out. I have good lighting, but I have so much reflection. So you're coming in close. Now look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And this is what you can't see from a distance. It's shimmery. The brown and the gold. Absolutely beautiful. I looked at the red. I came back down a few hours later. And uh, I certainly, this first layer, although I'm not happy with it, I need more, it kind of set me up for what I was going to do in layer two. But look at that, as a base, as a base layer, it's, it's almost intense, it's so beautiful. But it is a base layer, I need more. It rolled over the side, you can see that there. Look at that red, that red, that uh, transparent red iron oxide by golden fluid acrylics with a little bit of quinacridone nickel azo gold is fast becoming one of my absolute favorites. It's just such a beautiful color. There it is there, absolutely gorgeous color. So thank you for joining me for layer one of Passion 2. And uh, hopefully you enjoy watching layer two because layer two was very much, I believe, a success. And I, if you can hear tippy taps in the room, my little Bichons have just invaded my studio. <laughs> Gotta love dogs. Okay, everybody. Well, hope you enjoyed this. Wait for layer two. Bye.